Well, aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? And I'm glad you're here too. It makes it so much better when people show up. All right. We're going to pray for a couple of three people here. We, okay, some special folks. And right off of that, I saw Terry Dunn. And Terry's mama went home Friday. Was it Friday or Saturday? In, in the last day or two. In the last day or two. Uh, and uh, the memorial service will be this afternoon at Connor Rock. Is that right? Okay. And we want to pray for Terry and the family uh, that God would use this home going for those. Because you have some family that are lost too, don't you? And maybe God will use this to speak to that. This is not all there is, guys. You know, this, there's life after this life. And so, but we want to pray for Terry uh, and uh, as we as Terry Dunn. And then also, let's see who, uh, Clayton Thompson. That is, that's Cody's grandpa. Uh, and he fell the other day. And uh, can, uh, was, yes, was it yesterday? Yes, sir. Yeah. T- can you update us on He had surgery this morning. Mamaw's doing okay. <laughs> if Mamaw's okay, we're all okay, aren't we? <laughs> hey, let me see who that is right there. Hey, Dwayne, can you get Wanda to go to come back here right quick? I want her to share a story with us. Tell her just about that long. She's, she's doing kids' church. She'll shoot me for that. That's okay. Linda. All right. Uh, but so we're going to play for Clayton. And, and when I talked to Donna last night. They had scheduled surgery, which meant he was going to be overnight. Will he get out today or is how, long, how long will he be in? Uh, I don't know if he'll be out today. Or next, next few, hopefully next few days. Okay, but Donna said the thing he was worried the most about. You remember what it was? What was it? He's going to miss Sunday school. <laughs> His Bible study. He's, oh, I'm going to miss Bible study. <laughs> so isn't that good? But uh, so that's Clayton Thompson. I want to pray for Clayton and then Terry. And then also I'm waiting for one to come back. June Bentley, many of you know June. Uh, she's one of our shut-ins. They're just not physically able to come. It has been for a good while, especially with COVID and things like that. But uh, she uh, was at the store here she comes. Hey, Wanda, <laughs> sorry. Can you share the story about, about June? She, uh, she uh, passed out in one of the stores yesterday, or day, Friday. Friday. She must have been out for a little while. Yeah. 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 And y'all go pick her up, is that right? Yeah, we're going to pick her up and try to get her car back home. But just pray for her. She's yeah. Uh, and I think she called when her daughter called me. She yeah. said, call my, call my church family. Isn't that good? They Isn't that good? Her support through yeah. all the pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she said, but just everybody pray for her. And they, if it's just the blood sugar or something else. Okay, so, all right. But, but that's, that's what she, that's what she said. Thank you, Juan. I appreciate it. Let's pray together. Uh, Father, thank you so much that you're as close as the mention of your name. You've gathered with us this morning. You promised that when we gather like this, you'd be here. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for your promises. And we thank you that we can pray anytime, anyplace, anywhere and just call out to you. And so we want to lift these three. There are others, folks, but we want to lift these three especially to you. I want to pray for Terry today as as, uh, she goes to memorial service for her mom, that you would bless her and encourage her, that she would be a testimony and a witness to her family of those with hope. Uh, Pray for her in the days to come that you'd bring back memories that she's not thought of for a long time. I want to pray for Clayton, Lord, there in the hospital. Help him to recover quickly. Give the doctors wisdom. Give Clayton uh, just the the patience to do what they tell him to do and bring him back to us as soon as you, you deem that adequate. And then, Lord, we want to pray for June. 
Thank you for June. Thank you that in the middle of a crisis for her, one of your young ones was right by there to pray with her and to hold her and to help her. I am so glad you have us everywhere. And God, I pray for June that you would uh, help her to do what the doctors tell her to do and restore her health and uh, give her comfort and peace and joy in these days to come in Jesus' name. And all God's young and said, amen. amen. Well, all right, we are, I'm glad you're here. And we're, in, we're continuing our study in 1 Timothy. We are in chapter 3, and we're hardly touching chapter 3. We'll do that next week. Uh, we've been, you know, uh, we, we said last week that the past, that Timothy, 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy, is two of the pastoral letters. It's a letter to Pastor Timothy. He was pastor of the First Baptist Church in Ephesus, in case y'all didn't know, know that. Uh, but, uh, and it tells him a little bit about church, how to set it up, how, how the leadership should run, and how the people should be doing. And the very first thing he dealt with in chapters 1 and 2 was watch out for false teachers. You got to watch out for those who sound good, but they have an ulterior motive. I would say to you, watch out for false teachers. They are everywhere. And they're charismatic and charming and inviting. But listen, it's not how they look. It's not how they talk. It's what they teach. All right? And when you hear teaching, go to God's Word. Say, God, is that what you, is that it? Is that, is that, can I put that in my life? If it doesn't line up with God's Word, just trash it. And here's what I do. When I hear one of these yahoos and they come up with this crazy stuff, I don't just trash it. I just turn them off. I say, I don't need to hear that junk. When you, when you listen to a preacher... You ought to be able to trust what he says, right? You shouldn't have to say, is that right or is that wrong? And so the best way to do that is go there. Is he consistently in God's word? If he's not, if, you know, if he's discovered some new, tr some new truth that nobody in all these years have found, I'd run from him, okay? It's, it's all here, okay? And there's, there's nothing, uh, what Psalm says, nothing new under the sun, okay? And so when he says, watch out for false teachers. And now as we go to chapter 3, he's going to talk about the leadership structure, all right? In particular, Elders and deacons, okay? Now, here's what I want to tell you. Elders and, elders and deacons are the biblical mandate for church leadership, all right? Elders and deacons. Now, many of you, if you grew up in, in, like I did in a Baptist church, for the longest time, you didn't know what an elder was. You thought your pastor was the elder, and that's pretty much it. That's not what it is. That's part of what it is, but that's not all that it is. So we're going to look at what is an elder and how do they function? What's their responsibility? What are the qualifications for a man to serve as elder? And then secondly, we want to look at the deacons. Okay, what is a deacon? What are they doing? And what are the qualifications for them? It's going to be really helpful. All right, and so we're going to do that together. All right, uh, and what I think we stopped at last week, we're talking about the church, talking about uh, God's mandate for us, why God put us here, why God left us here, and what we're to be doing. Uh, and here's what I, in my experience. I see a lot of churches chasing a lot of other things. They're busy doing this, and not bad things. They're doing good things, but the heartbeat of the church is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, we're here to share the gospel. We're here to share our testimony. We're here to tell what God's done in us, and as sure as you do, what's going to happen is somebody's going to say, man, that's what I want, or that's what I need, or that's where I'm in my life. And as we do that, uh, we're being faithful to that. And what we must do as a church is be sure to keep the main thing the main thing. <laughs> That's pitiful, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. Let's try that again. What we must do is keep the main thing the main thing. Amen. That's more like it. And now we move on, okay? So anyhow, what I want to do, I want us to look at uh, the title of the message. I'm not sure if Ben put it up there. Yeah, it's Church Truths, okay? We're gonna, today we're going to look at some truths about the church. Uh, in my experience, most, most, uh, most members... Don't give a lot of thought to church. You come to church, things take place, you do whatever, and then you go home and come back, whatever. Uh, and uh, there's, the church is so much more than Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. The church is a daily thing that needs to be taken into. You are the body of Christ. If you've been born again, you have been, you have been, you have been baptized into the body of Christ. You're part of his body, Right? And so we are the church. This is not the church. I like this building. I like, I like everything about this building except parking. that parking lot. Now, the good thing about the parking lot is if you don't like to walk, you can just roll down to the bottom of the street and somebody will pick you up down here. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is stopping at that bottom. That's the problem with it. But it is a parking lot, all right? And it is paid more or less, you know. And so, but anyhow, th this is not the church. This is where the church meets. But it's part of the body of Christ meets, right? And so I want to share with you a few things, just a, a handful of things about 
about what, what we are, but what the church is. We're just, and we're just part of the body. We're not it. Aren't you glad? Teresa, aren't you glad this is not all there is to the church? Okay, all right. So, number one is this. The church is God's redemptive tool in this world. Let me say that again. The church is God's redemptive tool in this world. It's not the mosque. It's not the temple. It's not the synagogue. It's not some whatever kind of gathering, club gathering. The, the church, the body of Christ gathered is God's redemptive tool in the world. Let me give you a couple of verses for that. In Ephesians chapter 3, I'll give you a chance to get there if you want to. Ephesians chapter 3, beginning in verse 8, we read these words. And let me encourage you to turn to Ephesians chapter 3, okay? Didn't hear any leaves there. Of course, it's not fall, is it? All right. Uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 3, beginning in verse 8. Paul's writing, and he says, Now, to me, the very least of all saints, the grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Jesus Christ and to bring to light what is the administration of I like the way this is, of the mystery which for ages past has been hidden. And what is that mystery? Anyone know what the mystery is? The church. That God would have his body on this earth, okay? The mystery, all right, uh, for which for ages has been hidden past, who created by God, who created all things. In order, and here it is, part of the purpose of the church, in order that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church, to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. Listen, we are to be revealing the character of God as the body of Christ. And when churches fuss and fight and split and divide, we're doing a real poor job. <laughs> Y'all out there? Okay. Okay, see, in verse 11 says, Now this was in accordance with the eternal purpose which he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. All right, now turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Go back to your left a little bit. you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning in verse, a very familiar passage of Scripture, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all these things are from... Uh, God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us, listen, he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That's who we are. That's what we do as a church, right? Not your head, yeah. David? That's good. <laughs> he was bobbing like that. Okay. All right. Listen, remember I, I said, let me find somebody that looks like they know what they're talking about. Uh, Summer, you don't look that way, but I'm picking on you now. Uh, raise your hands up like this. And show us a picture of reconciliation. There it is. All right. We are reconciled to God. We're put back in relationship to God the way he created us. All right. Part of what happened at salvation. You're no longer afar off. You're no longer dead in your trespasses. Then. You're no longer blind to the things of God. You were reconciled to him. You, God moved in you to live by his Holy Spirit. And you now have the capacity to live in two worlds at the same time. This physical world and the spiritual world where God is. Isn't that good news? And he said, and we've made you ministers. Listen, you to get out there and tell us, look, you can be reconciled to God. This ain't it. It's a lot better than this. God has a work to be done. And he wants to invite his youngins to get involved. Amen. Well, do you excuse me if I get excited? Okay. So anyway, the minister of reconciliation. Namely, here's that ministry, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. That's good, isn't it? Not counting their trespasses against him. He has committed, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. That's what we're to be doing. All right, verse 20. Therefore, all right. Now, what do you, when you see the word therefore in scripture, what do you ask? What's that therefore? What's, what, therefore what? In light of what he just said, God has redeemed us. God has reconciled us. God has made us ministers of reconciliation. He said, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. That's good, isn't it? We're representing him in a foreign land. <laughs> That's what ambassadors do, right? All right. He said, we're ambassadors for Christ. And he said, it's as though you're entreating, that God were entreating through us. It's like when we speak, it ought to be like God speaking. We ought to speak what he says. Yeah. Right? We, we're, we, I mean, right now, I'm, I'm speaking for God, or he's speaking through me, hopefully, hopefully, right? And that's what he says we're to do as the children of God. 
you get out there and speak the truth about God. Don't get so hung up on the, on the side issues of our day that you fail to mention the mercy and the grace of God and that he wants you to be reconciled to him. Thank you, Keisha. All right. Uh, he said, uh, uh, he said uh, it, it's as though God were entreating through us and we beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Man, that's rich, isn't it? That's enough right there to hold us for the rest of the time. All right. So anyway, the church, the church is the, uh, it, it's the redemptive, God's redemptive tool in the world. All right. Number two, all right. The church can impact the world like nothing else. The church, the body of Christ, can and should be impacting the world like nothing else. I'll give you another word for that, another verse for that. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. What's that called? Anyone know what that passage is called? The Great Commission. Jesus is about to send, ascend back into heaven shortly, okay? And he, he gathers his disciples. He says this. And Jesus came up and spoke to his disciples, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore. Now, if you can see that word in the original language, it's in a tense that says, go, and as you're going, all right? It's not like, well, I'm going to go on Tuesday night. You know, we visit on Tuesday night. I'll do it on Tuesday night. Or I'll tell you what, I'm the first Monday of every month I'm going to go. No, he says, you go, and as you're living your life, you go make disciples, right? Now, here's a, I'm not sure where it started or when it started, and I don't hear it much anymore, but it's still around. There was a mindset back when I was but a boy that you brought people to church, they'd hear the gospel, and they'd get saved by, while they were in church. That ever happened to anybody? I, listen, I heard the gospel when I, I mean, I, I grew up in church, but I heard the gospel for the first time when the lights came on in church. Uh, and I was sitting about three rows back in the middle section of a great big church, and God convicted me. I, and I wasn't, it wasn't in a sermon, it was in a, in a Christian group called Truth. And the leader of that group was Roger Breland. I think he's still kicking someplace or not. It should be. Uh, he's not dead yet, Summer. Okay. Uh, and uh, everything that group sang and everything that he said was like there was nobody else other than me. It was like he, he, he talked about where I was. He talked about what I needed. And I was convicted by God that that's what I was looking for and that's what I needed to do. And that was the answer to my lostness. Well, here's what I did. They had pews there. They weren't dignified like us with chairs you can move around, all right? They had pews, you know. And so I sat in my own pew that night, I guess, all right? And so anyhow, I grabbed that pew. They had an invitation, and I was in the middle of this big, long row, this big, the biggest pew in the church, right? There's a center aisle, you know. My brother and his wife were on one side. I don't know who was on the other side of it. But anyhow, I grabbed that pew, and that pew was not going anywhere. <laughs> Man, I was holding on to it, make sure it didn't leave. And I withstood that. Until the invitation was over with. Now, there were about 1,500 people. That's not a lot nowadays. But 1,500 people were there. And I hadn't been in a church crowd that big in my whole life. And I couldn't imagine getting in front of those people and going up and saying, I need Jesus. But I knew I needed Jesus. But I held on because of fear of man. And when church was over, I thought, Whew, made it. Except for one thing. I didn't make it. At that time, I lived, lived by myself. I wasn't married or anything and, and had a little small apartment. And I went home that night to that apartment, and I laid my little head down to go to sleep, and I could not go to sleep. And about 2 in the two o'clock in the morning, I gave up. I said, God, I hear what you're saying, and I am a sinner. I've lived a godless life. I have offended you, and I need a Savior. Would you forgive? And I just rolled out of my bed, and Jesus saved my soul that very night there. And, and see, and that, it used to be that people came to church to get saved. And I would have that night if it had only been about four people in church. But the big crowd scared me. Let me tell you what ought to happen. What ought to happen is as we live out there, we work out there, go to school out there, we mow our yards out there, there ought to be something about us that says these people have the answer. There ought to be a chance that we have our antenna. We're just waiting to share the gospel. Waiting to, this, you know, he said, I want you to go and be witnesses, right? What is a, a witness doesn't win somebody, right? What does a witness do? All they do is they tell what they know about the situation. That, that's the command of us. It's not to go out and be soul winners. We can't save anybody. But what we will be faithful witnesses. You shall be my witnesses, he says, right? And as we witness with our lifestyle and with our lips, God's going to bring people in our life. A manly be, as you say, he said, if you'll live holy before the Lord and open to his leading, he said, you'll have to backslide not to witness. Because God's going to bring people. Listen, 
I was in sales for a bunch of years. I led this guy to the Lord in, a, in, a, in a, one of the biggest office buildings in Abingdon. And I didn't even talk about Christianity. He knew I was a Christian. He brought up something in his life. And I said, well, can I share something with you? And I just shared the gospel with him right there. And we, in his office, we prayed for him to receive Christ. And he was a grown man for crying out loud. But God will let you do that. But, you, you know, most of us, but what if they ask a question? You ever say that? But, what if he asks a question? That is the best thing to have you is a question you don't have the answer to. You know why? Because you now have an open door to come back again. Find out the answer. You know, we were talking, and, and, it's, and you, you get another shot at it. Isn't that a good deal? And so that's, that's what he says in, in Matthew. He said, go therefore. <laughs> I got carried away, didn't I? Go therefore, and as you're going, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them. It's not enough just to win them, but you teach them to observe all that I commanded you, and I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Isn't that good? All right, that's second. Isn't that good? Okay, thank you, Keisha. All right, number three. <laughs> number three. The church and the church alone. All right, turn to your neighbor and say the church alone. The church and the church alone can transform the world. The church and the... Let me give you some more verses. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 13, 14, it's the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus, speaking about his people, said, You are the salt of the world. He said... You're, you're the light of the world. Get out there and be salt and be light. That means that we're to speak in such a way that we add flavor, <laughs> that we preserve, that we sting sin. You know what ought to happen to us when we get out there tomorrow morning and get on a job someplace and these guys and gals are bragging about how immoral they were this past weekend or how much they drank or how much they smoked or how much they, how, what they took. To get them a high, it ought to grieve our hearts. And it ought to be that we say, God, would you give me the courage to say, I don't go for that stuff myself. What would happen if the people of God just began to speak up, not in a rude way or obtrusive way, but just say, you know, I used to live that way, but I'll be honest with you, I, I don't even want to do that stuff anymore. You say, I, that, who cares what they think? <laughs> All right, just obey God. But anyway, that's for another sermon. All right, so anyhow. All right. Now, it looks like from all we see going around us, not just here, but around the world, we have an overwhelming task, doesn't it? But we have an overwhelming God. Amen. And if we can run with him and if we'll live with him and obey him and trust him, we can get the job done. And we is us. Right. Now, we can't do it all. Is that right, Brownie? OK, I mean, we can't get the whole world, but we can work on it. Matter of fact, we're trying to work on it. Just last, just last Wednesday night, we, uh, we unanimously, unanimously voted to support three, really, uh, ministries that go everywhere with the gospel. We get to share in the abundance of that. Isn't it good? When somebody Christ comes, comes right to them, we get part of the glory for that. I mean, God will say, you did a good job. You know, when you gave that money faithfully, you did a good job, right? But we can do it, but, and we can do what we can do, okay? Uh, so, uh, if we're going to do that, if we're going to, we're going to, be that, we're going to have to have the mind of Christ. Now, there's a verse in the Old Testament I hear, and I just it just crawls me. Any, ever, any of the Bible verses ever crawl on you? It's not the verse, but it's what people say about it. There's a verse, and I can't remember where it is now, but it says, now you know that the, your thoughts are my, not my thoughts, and my ways aren't your ways. You ever hear that? Well, you know, his thoughts aren't our thoughts. If you read that in context, okay, critically important. You can't take a verse out of context and, and get the truth out of it. Okay. All right. It, comes, it becomes a pretext then. All right. He is talking to the pagans of the world. He's not talking to the children of God. He said, my ways aren't your, just read it. You'll find it. Where is it? If I know, is that Isaiah? Where is that? I can't remember where it's at now. The, he, let's, say, let's say he was talking to them back there. Let's give him that. It's not though. He's talking about lost people. Okay. In the New Testament, which is a totally different, it's the Spirit of God come. There is now the body of Christ. God lives, doesn't live in a temple or a church or a tent. He lives in, in the believers. Nod your head, yeah. All right. And Paul says, do you understand that, ready? Do you understand that you have the mind of Christ? In, you know that verse? You have the mind of Christ. If you've been born again, you have the capacity to think like God thinks. 
As a matter of fact, as you obey his spirit, you're thinking like he thinks. And as you're following the spirit's leading, you're doing as he does. But I've heard Christian after Christian say, well, now you know. But God said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. On and on. This. Well, that's another. Note. I wish Pam was there. She could keep me in line. Okay. So let's, let's do one, we'll two more things and we'll go home. Okay. Uh, uh, look at the church and, and the body of Christ. And that's us. All right. Number one, the church is a body and not a business. Can I say that again, Sarah? The church is, not a, is, is a body and not a business. Romans 12, verses 4 and 5. For just, he's talking about the believer. He's talking about Christians, okay? For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members don't have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. All right? That is to say, we're part of the same body. Some of us might be a foot. Some of us might be a toe. Some of us might be a nose. Some of us might be ears. Some, some of us may be a wart. <laughs> you know, I think I've met some of those guys. All right. But we're, we're, we're part of the body. We're not, not all of us are a mouth. Not all of us are an ear. Not all of us are feet. Right. He's got, God does that. First Corinthians chapter 12 says this. You ready? It expounds on that. For even as the body is one. And yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one. So all, that's the way the body of Christ is, he says, okay? Verse 13. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. We were all made to drink of one spirit. For the body is not one member, finish it for me, but many. Verse 17. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now, I love this verse. Now, God has placed the members, each one of them in the body, just as he desired. One of the translations says, just as it pleases him. Isn't that good? And that's us. You're not the body, but you're part of the body. Isn't that good? And we have, we have different functions as the body. And as we function together under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we paint a gorgeous picture of the Lord Jesus Christ and salvation, and the kingdom of the living God. But when we don't function that way, we give a distorted picture. It's like, how many times people say, ah, a bunch of hypocrites at church. We've done that. See, we've, we've talked, we've talked, what was it, uh, Vance? We talk uh, whipped cream, <laughs> but we, uh, we live 2% lives. Listen, we, we are to live like the people of God. It means we're going to be different. It, are you sitting down? What's your first name? Sure. Are you Sure. I'm glad I don't call you Craig. See, I'm glad I asked you. <laughs> Do you like to offend people? Oh, man, I love to, Craig. <laughs> no, I don't. Nobody. I don't. You guys, you've got a few yahoos yeah, that like to aggravate people. But, you know, if you're living like, like a, a follower of Jesus, fully devoted follower of Jesus, Christ, you are going to offend some people. Even Chris is going to offend some people. And Chris, huh? <laughs> I know how you feel. Where's Pam? <laughs> I almost fell for that one. All right. But you, it, it, listen, if we live in accordance with God's word, we're going to offend some folks. We're not going to be politically correct. Have you heard the latest definition of political, politically correct? It says this. It's giving up your opinion for some whiny, silly babies. That's what it is. Okay, okay. I might be a girl, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's it. I mean, you can't even... Peppy Le Pew, my soul. Looney Tunes, come on. Professing to be wise, they became fools. That's what Romans 1 says. And we're living in those days. But you're going to offend somebody. Just, just enjoy it. <laughs> I mean, didn't Jesus offend people? He, he offended religious people. All right, that's good. Okay, anyhow, so that's that, all right? Uh, number two, first of all, a church is a body, not a business. Secondly, a crowd is not a church. And I'm a little bit guilty of this, I think. Uh, but, but a church is not just a gathering of people. It's a gathering of the members of the body of Christ. Now, here's what we do. <whistles> that church is a whole lot more effective than this church. Look how big they are. Look how many people go there. Why, we don't have so many right here. There must be better than us. That ain't the truth. That's not the truth. You know that, don't you? 
It's not a matter of how many people you have. Is that yours, Sarah? <laughs> Do you recognize that crowd? <laughs> We've enjoyed having you this morning. Okay. <laughs> now, see, you won't get that in the big church, will you? Let me tell you what happened one time. I'll, I'll get, we went to a great big church one time, Pam and I, and we had all of our kids. And I was preaching at that church, just visiting preach. I wasn't. Uh, and on each side of the thing, they had this little red box. And if, if little Billy gave problems, they'd put the last four digits of your phone number up there. And that meant little Billy suing himself. So anyhow, I was preaching something like this, I think. And I just said, man, if Pam wasn't here right now, I could tell you all a good story. And all of a sudden, our phone number came up on that thing. <laughs> the guy back in the booth put up that phone number, and Pam left. You know, so <laughs> he said, now, te now tell us. Okay. All right. <laughs> but uh, the Greek, <laughs> the Greek, where's Pam? The, <laughs> We, we have to take an oath when we come in. And when Pam's not here, what, hey, what happens at Providence? Okay, that's a deal. I, I won't tell on you if you won't tell on me. Yeah. <laughs> the word for church is ecclesia, E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A. And it means a gathering of called out ones. It's not just a gathering of people, but it's the called out ones, those who belong to God. That's the church. I promise you, and I don't, I've been kind of scoping, I'm not, well, some of you I have some questions about, you know, but there probably are some lost people among us this morning. Maybe just that you don't even realize, well, I go to church. It doesn't make you different. You can go to church and go straight to hell from church. Do you know that? You can go to hell with the Bible in your hands. It's have you been washed in the blood of Christ? Have you confessed your sin, turned from those sins, and made him Lord of your life? That's salvation. All right? But I promise you, the bigger the crowd, the more likelihood there are more lost people there. So that's not necessarily the group. Now, I'm not, I like big crowds. If I had my brothers, we'd have a huge crowd. I like, I like that. But the truth is, a crowd is not, is not it, okay? When it comes to the quality of ministry uh, and, and pleasing God, a big crowd can be deceptive. Right? Okay. That brings us to number three. In light of that fact, let's focus on a healthy body, not a large body. Okay, now if God sees fit to give us a large body, I'm for it, right? But the focus is not on, let's build, we could build this church. We could give TVs away and bicycles and all that kind of stuff. And then they'd come out in droves. Kite day, you ever have kite day? <laughs> One church in town, I don't think you do it, but you should have kite day. Everybody come got a free kite. Oh man, I'm going to that church. I thought, I've always wanted to kite. <laughs> you know, salad bars. I mean, it, <laughs> I mean, it's stupid. Some church do some of the dumbest things. First 400 members get a t shirt. I, you know, I, I saw a t shirt yesterday, by the way, Chasing Rabbits, worst fan. And it, said, and it was real, it was nice. It was very professional. It wasn't one of those things looking at Smoky Mountains, you know. And, it's, and, it, said, and it said, uh, Appalachian Regional Lunatic Asylum. I grabbed her, took her down. I got her. I got her. I thought she'd escaped. <laughs> Which another, another, another horse to ride is wearing a Christian t-shirt doesn't make you a Christian. You know that? Okay. Well, of course, it does him, though. He's okay. All right. So anyway. All right. So anyhow, um, what we want to do, what we need to do is have a healthy body. And if God chooses the large ones, okay. But a healthy body. And a healthy, you built, listen, you, help, you have a healthy body as a church by walking with God. By being in his word. Okay. Listen, when we, we meet here, we teach God's word. We don't teach the digest or some periodical or something I saw on the internet or you did. We teach what, what does God's word say? What does that mean when he says? How do I put that into practice, right? And you steer away from the stuff that has zero to do with the things of God. Having said that, Easter's are coming and the rabbit's getting fat, right? You do understand, don't you, that rabbits don't have anything to do with the real meaning of Easter? You do understand that colored eggs don't have anything to do with Easter? I won't shake you down. You do understand that ho, ho, ho doesn't have anything to do with Christmas, don't you? And you do understand that Christians don't have any business whatsoever as a church having Halloween junk going on. Getting home now, ain't I? Let me tell you what I think. 
especially when it comes to our kids, we get them for just a few hours a week at best. They can get witches and eggs and rabbits and Santa Claus and stuff like that out there all day. And if you do it at home, I don't have a problem with that. But I don't think a church ought to pay any attention to that. I think when our kids come to children's church and to Sunday school, it ought to be Jesus. And Easter is about Jesus. It's not about eggs and rabbits and stuff like that. Man, I, I, you know, I'm real tempted to go to the Easter egg hunt at the church one of these Saturdays. And you, you say, well, our pastor got arrested yesterday. He beat up little kids and took their eggs from them. <laughs> you know, I'm serious, you know. Let the, let the world do that. It's about Jesus. It's not about junk like that. And a church needs to say, we're here to teach God's word. We're here to grow Christians into strong believers. Now, you could do, again, out, out there, have, have a nice day. But the church is different. We march to a different drum, or at least we should. I'm making some of you nervous. I can see that, so I will move on, okay? <laughs> Our responsibility is to celebrate him, Amen. to join him, and to follow him. First, last, and foremost. All right, one more, we're done. All right, almost done. All right, a church shouldn't be judged by its seating capacitor, S-E-A-T-I-N-G, but its sending, S-E-N-D-I-N-G, its sending capacity. Um. The work of the church is to win, equip, and mobilize the people of God. I believe that with all of my heart. To win, to equip, and to mobilize the people of God. I believe that a healthy church ought to be just uh, continuously... And regularly sending out missionaries and pastors and worship leaders and things like that. Uh, since I've been here, I can't think of anyone from the church that we permanently sent out for any of those factions. I pray for that. I want some of these younger guys and gals that are getting up to say, God's called me into ministry. But only God can do that. It's, you, we can't make that happen. But we can say, God, we can, we can, uh, we can salt the oats, can't we? Hey, while you're talking about a vocation, why don't you throw in, you know, the things of God in that equation? You won't make much money, but you'll make an eternal difference, right? And then those of us who are too old or not equipped or we don't feel called into that, man, we'll help you. That one thing we have done I'm proud of is we have sent folks on mission trips. Uh, and that's one thing you can do. That's part of what we can do. But would you join me and pray, God, would you, would you bring people here? And then get rid of them. <laughs> That's not the way. You know, would you bring people here? Let us either win them or equip them or whatever. And well, God, would you help us be the, some, some of the part of mobilizing who knows where in the world? Amen. And in the meantime, like we've been doing, let's give toward the, sort of mis the, the support of missionaries and churches and things like that. And all God's young and said. Uh, we do that in Haiti, for example. Uh, we did it in Nepal, for example. And that's good. But there's more to be done. And all God's young and said. Okay, so that's the church, okay? And we, we, we can go on for a long time, but that's, that's all. We're going to start with the leadership next week. How do I fit in? What, what can I do? What can the individual members do to make us what, what I think God wants us to be? Number one is give to the work of the ministry. As Pam's dad told her all her teenage life, it costs money to ride a train. <laughs> you know, and it costs money to, to do the things of a church. I mean, just building lights, insurance, all that kind of stuff, but also to give to get out there to make a difference in that, in the world and things like that. All right. Secondly, do the work of the ministry. If you're here, I, I believe that God's bring, God brings people here not to sit and watch the show. I, I like, I mean, I like the show, but I think God sends, brings people here to help us paint a picture of Christ and get involved, whether it's with children that excite our children in the children's church, or in a preaching, teaching, whatever it is. I think God puts us there to do things like that. For example, uh, we, got, we got the call, we, or the text, it was email email from June's uh, daughter yesterday, and she's in Florida, they're headed back now. But she said, Mom's going to get out tomorrow, and we can't get back there in time. And she said her church loves her. Would you all be able to pick Mom up and get her home for us, please? And I made one phone call, one. And I just said, I don't know if you can do it, but can you see that it gets done? And it's scheduled that, that as soon as this thing's over with today, they're headed to the hospital to pick her up and get her home. And here's what they said. 
And they told the, her daughter, hey, and we'll, if she needs some groceries, that's where she's went at, she passed, said, we'll get her some groceries and things like that, take care of her. That's ministry. That's a cup of cold water. Amen. And you may, maybe that's your bag. Maybe that's your thing. Or maybe you say, I can't well, give. Get involved in the ministry. Make, make a difference in that. And thirdly, teach and encourage others to go. Amen. All right. Let me close with saying this. I believe, well, no, I don't believe. I know. Providence Community Church is part of the body of Christ. We're part of it. All right. Uh, that means there's work to be done. And I, I really, and I'm, it's not just preacher talk. I really believe that God wants to do something through providence that we can't even dream of. Amen, Colton? I do. I mean, I think God wants to use us. He's bringing people to us that have, have, have gifts and abilities and talents. There's people already here to do that. I think God's up to something. So my question is, will you join me and let's run after God and say, God, what do we do? How do we put it into practice? What can we do to make a difference? How can we influence this part of our world? How can we transform lives to love you and fully be devoted to you and follow after you? He wants to use us. And one person or two persons or ten people can't do it. It's going to take, remember, we're all part. He's placed us here just as it pleased him. And there may be some of you this morning, you need to, be, you need to join us. We'd love to have you if God wants you here. That's, that's the kind of church we are. Is that right? Amen. And that's kind of we want to be, and we want to be better and more. And if God wants to keep us this size, that's okay. But wouldn't it be all right if God maybe grew us by eight or ten more people? <laughs> all right? Wouldn't it, be all right? wouldn't it be something if we had to get rid of this piece of property and buy a piece of property with a flat drive uh, parking lot? <laughs> I keep looking at shopping centers that are going out of business, you know. <laughs> I'm waiting for a nail salon to go out. And that's why I'm moving in right there. <laughs> all right. Oh, huh? Uh, wait a minute. Cabela's. You got a drink? <laughs> Where you're going, there'll be those kind of animals everywhere. You know? <laughs> but there will be good fishing. <laughs> but just dream. Just, huh? A baptistry. Wait just a second. <laughs> Come on in. Huh? <laughs> I bet the Lord said, that's not what I had in mind. <laughs> you, you're dreaming a little bit big on me there. But I do believe God wants to do something. Don't you want to be part of something where God's the explanation for it? Amen. Man, I, 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 what would you see? What, where was Finn going a minute ago, by the way? He could be. I, saw, I looked around, Sarah's chasing Finn up this way. I thought, where's he? Wouldn't it be amazing if us growing up get so excited? Let's do something. I'll, I'll go now. Where do you want me to go? One of my kids were smaller. I said, you want to go with me? They, they didn't say, where are you going? They'd say, yeah, I'll go, because I always got candy. Stuff. I said, you want to go with me? Yeah, I'll go. They get in the car and say, where are we going? <laughs> And we ought to be about it with God. God, I don't, you know, if nobody else goes, I'm, I'll, I'll go. Let me go with you. I, I want to be part of what you're up to. But it won't happen just sitting here. And all God's young and said, amen. amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Uh, I have just been encouraged. I've been challenged. I've been convicted. God, there's so much that I think you can do and would do through us. Make us ready, would you? Give us a hunger to be more. Give us a hunger to... Uh, love you more and serve you better god as a church bring the people to us that we need to accomplish what you were putting in line for us we want that we desire that we don't want to do the explainable by our strength we want to be up on something that you're on to now god in this sacred moment we want to give you people a time to respond maybe there's one somebody here who doesn't know you and they just realize christianity is not just coming to church it's a life and they need you God, let this be the day they come to you for salvation. Maybe there's somebody here who's just been wandering away, and you've just quickened their spirit again to get in and dig in, and let you be God in their life in every area. And then, Lord, there's a possibility there's one somebody here who's looking for a church home, and they have skills and weaknesses and strengths that will help us be what you've made us to be and called us to be. God, we want to give them a chance to respond to that. The heads are bowed, eyes are closed, nobody's looking around, just you and God doing business. If you have a spiritual decision to make, I'm here to pray with you. You need me to do that. Or if you need to come, just kneel and say, God, I give it all to you. Or if you know what God wants, maybe he wants you to join this church. Or maybe you need to ask God to, to forgive your sins and save you. We'll just rejoice with you as a man in that. So as the music plays softly and you have a decision to make, we'll just rejoice with you as you walk in obedience to him. 
Hey guys, this is Pastor Stan, and just want to take a second to say thanks for watching. Uh, I trust that our time together is beneficial to you, that God's using his word to make a difference, uh, that he's challenging you, that he's encouraging you, that he's convicting you, that he's changing you. Whatever he needs to do to do his work in you, uh, that's a great encouragement to us. If you could let us know that, that would be encouraging also. Oh, and by the way, I hope you're in church somewhere. Uh, if you've not... Uh, uh, Fix yourself in a local church. Let me encourage you to do that. You need that fellowship. You need that accountability. You need those ministry opportunities. So, so get yourself in church if you're not already there. Uh, if you live in the area, we'd love to have you visit with us. That'd be a, a great joy to us as well. We're at 19175 Woodland Hills Road in Abingdon, Virginia. Uh, just come in. Where our services are Sunday morning at 1030, Sunday night at 6 o'clock, and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. In any one of those times, you'd be counted a very special visitor. So I hope you can do that. Uh, let me encourage you also to pray for us. Would you do that? Would you uh, ask God to use us, make a difference in us, uh, keep us clean, keep us on the road to righteousness, and to uh, to be fruitful in this kingdom. Again, just want to tell you that uh, we're glad you're here. feel like you're part of the family. Some of you watch so often, it's like you're here with us already. So uh, we love you, pray for us, and hope to see you next time.